Well, Marjorie Taylor Greene was on Tucker Carlson's show last night, and she said that uh, this war in Ukraine is against Russia. This war against Russia, the Chiron below the, the two of them, Tucker and, and Margie, was all of the money spent in Ukraine could be spent here helping the American people. Putin must be smiling. On the line with us is our old buddy, the investigative reporter, Greg Palast. He's a journalist, author, filmmaker. His latest film, Vigilante, George's Vote Suppression Hitman, produced by Martin Sheen and George DiCaprio, narrated by Rosario Dawson. And uh, you can watch it for, uh, I believe you can watch it free over gregpalast.com. Uh, Greg underscore Palast on Twitter. Uh, Greg, welcome back to the program. You've been doing a deep dive into Putin's pronouncements. I don't know if you caught it this morning that uh, Medvedev just came out and said, and I quote, uh, this is why it's so important to achieve all the goals of the special military operation to push back the borders that threaten our country as far as possible, even if they are the borders of Poland. Yes. Well, um, uh, by the way, uh, greetings from Switzerland. Thank you. Uh, I, you'll, if you go to BuzzFlash or GregPalace.com for the updates, you can read the article, Putin's Mein Kampf, An Invasion Foretold. Look, this guy um, wrote, you know, what we have, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, Silvio Berlusconi, the uh, Italian fascist, Marie Le Pen, uh, Tucker Carlson, uh, the rest of the gang, and a few, unfortunately, a couple of people on on the left have gotten the idea that uh, that the problem here is that NATO provoked Russia and that that justified NATO's expansion provoked Russia and justified this invasion That's complete nonsense. But the important thing is, what is the reason uh, Putin actually wrote a, a 6800 word essay, a monster on why he was going to seize and take over all of Ukraine? And it's a uh, he put that out in June of 2021. We should have been ready for this because he did it all. And there's not one single mention of NATO. There's only a slight mention of NATO positive, believe it or not. So what's going on here? What's going on? Putin has is trying to become Putin the great, not restore the Soviet Union but to restore an imaginary empire that be, that was founded in the 10th century called the Kievan Rus Empire, and that Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus are one great and single Slavic nation. The problem was it didn't happen. The, um, who did rule uh, right. that area from Kiev, uh, Moscow was just a time. Greg, we're, we're, uh, your, audio Back, is, that single. Your, your audio is coming and going. I don't know uh, if there's anything you can uh -oh. do on your end to, to, to fix okay. that. Okay, can, can you hear this now? Can yeah. you hear this now? Yes, I can. Okay. Just, just let me recap what, I, what, what we missed and what I think you were saying, which is that you know, uh, Putin has been okay. saying that, that Ukraine and Russia are all part of one ancient Slavic empire going back to the 10th century, but in fact that was... Uh, not Slavic, it was the Norwegians and the Swedes who controlled that territory. And uh, pick it up from there if I, if I have that right. Yes, yeah, so he has this fever dream. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. He has this fever dream of history that there was this great Slavic empire and that it was a crime that Ukraine was taken away from the Ruski Mir, the Russian world. And by the way, he blames, he doesn't blame NATO. He blames the Bolsheviks. He blames Lenin and the rest because, you know, um, Ukraine has never, ever in history been a part of Russia. Um, that's a complete uh, misunderstanding that Putin that Putin has been very successful in selling. Um, in fact, the Bolsheviks and the uh, uh, always recognize the independent nation of Ukraine, and it had its own seat uh, since the founding of the United Nations. And uh, so there was no such thing. But he wants to recreate this single nation, become Vlad the Great. Yeah. And he explains that in this 21-page essay. Are you, are you still hearing me? I, I am, and, 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 and spot on. And I've Good. been saying on this program okay. for, for months now that he's basically uh, trying to become Catherine the Great. And, uh, you know, now I'm, no, I'm no student of Russian history. Apparently, uh, you have become one here. And 
Um, yes. But yes. It, it, is that what's going on? I mean, he's he's looking back at the at the people who consolidated empire and and thinking that this is his legacy before he. I mean, the guy's seventy years old. He, may, he seems to have health problems. Uh, this is the the world he wants to leave. Well, it's a very but it's not just any world. It's not just creating a larger Russian Slavic empire that had never existed. Rat uh, the, the second uh, Assis Belli, the second reason for invading Ukraine, is to restore the supremacy of the Muscovite Russian Orthodox Church. You have to understand there's a schism. The Ukrainian uh, Orthodox Church is split away. And, of course, you've got the Greeks, and he's no friend of the Catholics or Muslims either. So uh, he has decided that uh, his main aim is to restore the power of Kirill, who is the source of his own political power. Putin is nothing without uh, the patriarch Kirill in Moscow. And Kirill has lost the grip, has lost the grip of Ukraine. So the idea is to bring back Russian values and the Russian Orthodox Church values. And he is not concerned about cruise missiles from Poland. He's not concerned. What he's concerned about is homosexuals from NATO. That's the that's one of the big things. If you read his writings, it's all about the under traditional Russian family. Uh, Kirill is is absolutely uh, overwhelmed as to, as is Putin. They're they're completely absorbed with the idea that uh, that there is this transgender mixing of sexes in the West, which is poisoning and undermining the traditional Russian culture. And wow. that's what he's very concerned about. He's a religious man and he's really very much the handmaiden he is not the power in in russia kirill uh the head of the orthodox church there is and the split away of the orth of the ukrainians not only religiously but culturally is a threat yeah and I think, that's the threat that they are trying to crush i think most americans have no idea that there's uh, you know the, completely separate from catholicism there are these uh, uh, little orthodox churches around the world that are kind of their own little separate universes with their own uh, equivalents of a papacy. Uh, you got the Greek Orthodox Church, you've got yes. the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, you've got the Russian Orthodox Church, you've got the Egyptian Orthodox Church called the Coptics. Um, uh, yes. that I'm, I'm very familiar with. You're a um, minister, I understand. I was at one, you know, back yes. in the 70s. Yes. And and um, so there, and so you've got these kind of dueling Orthodox churches, and the and the Russian Orthodox Church thinks that they should control the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, and the or, and there was a lot of kind of mixing for a while there, and now the Ukrainian Orthodox Church is saying no, 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 <laughs> we're our own thing, right? And and so, so, Kirill right. is like, what was the name of the guy who was uh, the. Uh, uh, the Romanov family's uh, uh, religious advisor. Um, I think it was. Uh, uh, I better be careful. Uh, I think yeah, Rasputin. Off, but I'll, I better. It was Rasputin. Wasn't um, it? Uh, yeah, but yeah, I think Kirill Rasputin. 